allowing me to, to show these results. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, stochastic particle acceleration by pressure and isotropy driven plasma instabilities. Uh, so the astrophysical scenario where I, I'm going to try to motivate this, this work is the case of low luminosity accretion disks around black holes. Uh, perhaps the most the best studied case is the case of Sagittarius A star. And the reason why we want to use this type of systems is because in the case of Sagittarius A star, uh, one can estimate the collision time between particles and find that that time is, could be much larger than the accretion time of the system. So that implies that as the matter falls into the black hole in Sagittarius A star, the plasma behaves as a collisionless plasma. So that fact already suggests that uh, the dissipation of energy as the matter falls into the black hole uh, doesn't necessarily produce uh, thermal distributions of particles, but probably one can expect the presence of non-thermal features. Uh, from the observational point of view, there are a few suggestions saying that uh, the particles falling into the black hole don't necessarily follow a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, but I want to focus on these observations of the quiescent state of Sagittarius A star, where the low frequency radio observations uh, explain this excess that uh, appears here, uh, assuming the presence of a non-thermal tail in the electrons with an spectral index of 3.5. Um, so what we want to do is try to, to, to consider this possibility, whether the matter as it falls into the black hole, it could already be producing non-thermal particles. And in order to do that, one needs to consider all the possibilities, which include magnetic reconnection, probably shocks, weak shocks as matter falls, and also stochastic acceleration. So my focus will be stochastic acceleration, but some sort of different stochastic acceleration compared to the typical scenario that people usually consider, which is one scenario where uh, the pressure and isotropy of the particles produce instabilities that can accelerate particles stochastically. So the reason why we think that pressure and isotropies need to exist in the plasma falling into the black hole, at least in Sagittarius A star, is because in absence of collisions, particles tend to preserve their adiabatic invariants, and one of them is what people call magnetic moment. So the magnetic moment is just the square of the velocity of the particles perpendicular to the magnetic field divided by the uh, magnitude of the magnetic field. So if we think about a scenario where uh, we have a, a, an accretion disk that is turbulent, then the magnetic field should change in time, and that will probably produce, if the magnetic field grows, it will produce an increase in the perpendicular velocity of the particles with respect to the magnetic field, and that would create the scenario where the pressure perpendicular to the magnetic field is larger than the pressure parallel. So we are going to place, place ourselves in that scenario, and when that happens, we have plasma instabilities that react to the pressure and isotropies and try to keep them within certain range. So the instabilities that we are going to consider are the mirror instability and the ion cyclotron instability, which are driven by the pressure and isotropy of the ions, and the Whistler instability, which is driven by the pressure and isotropy of the electrons. So these instabilities, what they do is to provide pitch angle scattering to the particles, and that way they keep the anisotropy under a certain level. And the idea that we are going to try to explore is whether that pitch angle scattering provided by the instabilities may accelerate particles in the sense that it may produce non-thermal features in the distribution of energy of the particles. So we want to investigate that. And in order to do it in a self-consistent way, we are going to use particle-in-cell plasma simulations, where the plasma is modeled as a collection of particles. Therefore, we capture uh, effects that have to do with the distribution of energy of the particles. And we want to do it in the non-linear regime of the instabilities. So what we, the picture that we are going to have in mind is uh, we want to take a small 
piece of the plasma in the accretion disk, a very small piece, where the magnetic field is growing because of turbulence, maybe due to the magnetorotational instability, or simply because of the large scale evolution of this disk. It could be due to the uh, differential rotation of the disk, but for whatever reason, this magnetic field is growing, and we are going to simulate that by imposing in our simulations a shear velocity in the plasma. So we take the plasma and we impose motions that have the characteristic of a shear, and because of the magnetic flux freezing, the magnetic field is going to tilt and grow in time. And when that, when that happens, we are going to create pressure and isotropies, and therefore we are going to drive the instabilities into their nonlinear regime. So that's the basic idea. This is just an example of one of our simulations. What this panel is showing is the density of the plasma, and the yellow line corresponds to the direction of the magnetic field. So as we impose the shear, we are going to make this magnetic field grow. And as a consequence, we are going to excite different types of instabilities that are going to manifest themselves in these three panels that correspond to the different components of the magnetic field fluctuations. So this is just to show you. Um, oops. OK. So the magnetic field no longer points vertically. It kind of goes sideways. And you see here the formation of different patterns that correspond to the different instabilities that can appear. The, which correspond to the ion cyclotron, the mirror, the Wither instabilities that I, I already mentioned. If we look at that snapshot of the same simulation where the magnetic field is pointing in this direction, we see modes that are oblique. That means that they are wave vector uh, points oblique with, res with respect to the magnetic field direction. And those modes are the mirror modes. But if we look at the direction perpendicular to the plane of the simulation, the instability that dominates is the ion cyclotron modes, which are modes that grow or move along the direction of the magnetic field. And on top of that, it doesn't uh, appear very clear here, but on top of that, there are other modes that are also pointing parallel to the magnetic field, but on a scales that are much smaller, and those are the Whistler modes. Okay? So we are going to have plasmas where these three modes basically are going to be combined. Okay, so, but we, what, what we found in our previous works was that when the beta of the electrons, where the beta of particles is just defined as the ratio between their pressure and their magnetic pressure, so when the beta of the electrons is smaller than 10, the anisotropy of the electrons is completely dominated by the Whistler instability. So that is excellent news because that means that we don't need to worry about the ions when we want to study uh, possible acceleration of the electrons, and we can only run simulations where we can just run simulations where the dynamics of the ions can be completely ignored. So we are going to assume that the ions are completely, they have infinite mass, and we are just going to worry about the dynamics of the electrons. So this is what we did in our work last year, where we assume a temperature of the electrons. Uh, that is 0.28 times their rest mass energy, so these are mildly relativistic electrons. Uh, we were trying to reproduce conditions sort of close to the, the event horizon, or like 10 uh, Churchill radius away from the event horizon, or something like that. Uh, and we run these simulations where we amplify the magnetic field and we produce these Whistler waves. Okay, so the Whistler waves, as they evolve in time, they, they have an, ex, an initial regime where they grow exponentially and they, they saturate. And as a consequence of that, they tend to uh, heat up. They get heated by an effect that, is, uh, that we call an isotropic viscosity, which is just as normal viscosity in the sense that it depends on the anisotropy of the particles and is given by the multiplication between the, the, the the difference between the perpendicular and parallel pressure multiplied by Q, where Q is the growth rate of the magnetic field. So in this setup, uh, we do see that the electrons get heated. This is the heat, heating rate of the electrons. But if we look at the spectrum, we can look at the time evolution of the spectrum. So the, the spectrum shown in red corresponds to the initial spectrum, 
and the spectrum show in purple corresponds to the final spectrum after the magnetic field has been amplified by a factor of three. So what we see is that besides the heating, which manifests itself here uh, as a shifting of the spectrum to the right, besides that there is the appearance of a non-thermal tail with an spectral index close to 3.7. So this is interesting because, uh, as I said at the beginning, in, in the quiescent state of Sagittarius A star, people infer that the electrons probably have spectral indices close to 3.5. So this is good news, but we also wanted to understand what was the mechanism behind this uh, acceleration, this non-thermal acceleration. So in order to study that, what we did was to take two populations of electrons. One population is marked by this uh, vertical red line, and it's what we call the thermal electrons. And the second population is going to be uh, the electrons uh, marked by this gray area here, which is what we call the non-thermal electrons. And we want to investigate the way these two populations gain energy as time goes on. So, but in particular, we want to see the contribution that these two populations have to the growth of their energy. And that contribution could be two things. One is the anisotropic viscosity, which is what I, I mentioned before, which is shown by this green line here. And the other is the work done by the electric field of the Whistler waves. So the Whistler waves have electric fields, and that electric field can interact with particles and give them energy. So we calculate the work done by that electric field, and we plot it in blue line here. So what we see is that the green line uh, shows a positive gain in energy both for the thermal electrons and for the non-thermal electrons, but the blue line, which is the work done by the Whistlers, is negative in the case of the thermal electrons and it's positive and, positive and dominant with respect to viscosity in the case of the non-thermal electrons. So what is happening here is that as the instabilities are excited, uh, the thermal electrons, the ones that are in this region of the spectrum, give energy to the, to the waves and then these waves pass, transfer part of that energy to a small population of electrons that end up populating the non-thermal tail, okay? So this is the basic mechanism. This is the way the, the tail is produced. So we did a, a preliminary exploration of the dependence of this acceleration mechanism on the plasma parameters. Uh, this preliminary exploration assumed that the electrons have a temperature that is 0.28 times their rest mass energy, and we tested the beta. So what we see is that as we increase beta from 1 to 10, the efficiency of the, acceler of the acceleration decreases. So this is telling us that we need betas of order unity in order for the acceleration to be kind of uh, significant. And we also tested uh, the dependence on what we call the magnetization, which is, this, which is this ratio between the cyclotron frequency of the electrons and S, where S is the shear rate of the plasma. So what we do is to impose a shearing motion in the plasma, and that motion has a, a rate associated to it what, that tells us how fast we do the shearing. So in reality, this magnetization is huge. We can expect, for instance, in a system like Sagittarius A star, that this number should be of the order of 10 to the 10. Okay? So the fact that we see it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to exist in Sagittarius A star. Okay? So what we did uh, was to test the dependence on this magnetization. And for instance, we took the case with initial beta of the electrons of two, which is the red line. And in the dotted line case, we tested magnetization of 3,000. And in the solid line, we tested magnetization of 1,200. And what we see is that as we increase the magnetization, as we almost triple the magnetization, the acceleration doesn't disappear, and it actually gets a little bit harder. So this is excellent news because we need this acceleration to survive this modest increase in the magnetization, since in reality, this magnetization should go to much larger factors. Uh, but 
this study was done assuming a temperature equal to 0.25 times the rest mass energy of the electrons, which is uh, sort of representative of what would happen in Sagittarius A star, but it's, it's not representative of uh, every possible place in, in the accretion flow. So we want to go, for instance, to values of 10 for this, for this parameter, or include even smaller than 0.28. So this is something that we're going to go do in the future, but the next question is, okay, if electrons can be stochastically accelerated by pressure and isotropy-driven instabilities, then what happens with the ions? Can they do the same? And what we learn from the electrons is that in order for them to get accelerated, we need electric fields. So we know that in the case of the ions, the two instabilities are supposed to be important, are the ion cyclotron instability and the mirror instability. So the question is, are there electric fields associated to these uh, instabilities, right? And the answer to that can be directly seen from uh, the simulation. So this is a simu simulation where the initial beta is 0.5 of the ions. The temperature of the ions is 0.05, which is supposed to be representative of a plasma that is relatively close to the event horizon. And we use a mass ratio here of two, which of course is not representative of reality, but it's our first approach. Okay, so what we see is that the electric field in the simulations is pretty much correlated to this mode that represents the uh, ion cyclotron modes. So this is already suggesting that if the plasma is dominated by the ion cyclotron instability, then there is the chance of producing acceleration. But if the plasma is dominated by the mirror instability, then probably there is no way for us to see any significant acceleration. What we know is that the plasma is, is going to be dominated by the ion cyclotron instability if the beta of the ions is smaller than one. This is something that people see either in the solar wind or directly from theoretical linear calculations of growth rates of uh, these two instabilities. So that implies that if this acceleration happens in the case of the ions, we need betas of order unity or smaller. So these two plots compare a spectra of two simulations where the, the ions are under exactly the same conditions in the sense that they have a beta of 0.5, sorry, they have a temperature of 0.05, right? But the beta changes. And what we see is that we do produce a non-thermal tail. The, uh, in the case of beta of 0.5, the non-thermal tail is not a power law. You could say that it's a power law plus two bumps, but uh, it's hard to describe what it, exactly this tail is. But it's a pretty non-thermal tail, okay? But if we go to beta of two, there is a sort of power law tail, but which is much softer than in this case. So this is already uh, confirming what we were supposing in the sense that this simulation, since here the mirror instability start to be important, then the accelerating effect of the, of the pressure anisotropy driven instability decreases. So what we did was to do exactly what we did with the, with the electrons in the sense that we took the thermal ions and the non-thermal population of ions and we calculated uh, the work done by the electric field associated to the ion cyclotron waves. And we see that for the thermal ions, the work is negative, as it happened with the electrons. And for the non-thermal, the two non-thermal cases that we selected here, we see that the work shown in blue is positive and dominant compared to the green line that represents the viscous heating. So the non-thermal particles are mainly being heated by the electric field uh, of the ion cyclotron waves, which get their energy from the thermal ions. Okay, so this is something very similar to what happens in the case of the electrons. So the next thing that we wanted to study was this issue with the mass ratio and the magnetization, because this number needs to be huge in reality, and because, of course, the mass ratio in real plasma is not two, okay? So, but since we know that the ion cyclotron instability is the dominant uh, instability that could accelerate particles, we know that this instability propagates along the magnetic field. So what we did was to design simulations in 1D where we only uh, capture waves that propagate along the magnetic field lines. 
the technical, the technicality of how we did that uh, is beyond the scope of this presentation, but the bottom line is that we did 1D simulations that capture only modes that propagate along the magnetic field lines. And when we do that, we are able to compare cases with, with different mass ratios. So the difference between these simulations shown here uh, is only the mass ratio. The conditions of the ions are exactly the same. And so this panel is showing the evolution, is going to show the evolution of the spectrum of the ions. And what we see is the following. There is the formation of a non-thermal tail, which is exactly the same regardless of the value of the mass ratio. So we have mass ratios from 2 to 32, and, it, and we get exactly the same thing, which is confirming that the mass ratio doesn't play a role as long as we are worried about the acceleration of the ions. In terms of the acceleration of the electrons, in the same simulations, of course, we have things that are totally different, starting from the initial spectrum, because the, the ions, uh, the electrons uh, vary their mass a lot between these two sim this group of simulations. But since we, we are just worried about the, the, the ions, we can safely say that the mass ratio doesn't play a role. Okay? In terms of magnetization, uh, we tested simulation with mass ratio of, of 8 and different values of omega ci over s from 800 to 3200. And we see something very similar to what we saw in the case of the electrons, in the sense that the, spe the final spectrum doesn't change much, but it tends to change in the sense that as we increase the magnetization, the spectrum gets a little bit harder. So this is great news because uh, this value in reality is very large. Okay, so we, we at least want to see that as we increase it, the, 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 the effect of the acceleration persists, and even better if it gets a little bit uh, more efficient. So the next question that we wanted to ask is, okay, so we have this acceleration that is driven by the ion cyclotron instability, which shouldn't depend on the way we drive the instability, in the sense that we are driving the instability by providing a shear motion to the plasma, which amplifies the magnetic field. But the magnetic field could be amplified, for instance, if we compress the plasma, right? In that case, the magnetic field would grow, the pressure and isotropy would also grow, and we would still trigger these instabilities. Therefore, the accelerating effect of the instability should still persist if we compress the plasma. So we tested that using the uh, setup of Cironi at all 2015. These simulations were run by Lorenzo Cironi, and we use exactly the same parameters, beta 0.5, uh, temperature of the ions uh, with respect to their rest mass energy of 0 0.05. And what we see, so these two plots correspond to electrons and ions, but I want to draw the, your attention to the case of the ions. We see a non-thermal tail with a spectral index of 3.5, which is very close to what we see. Uh, we also see this kind of bumpy structure, so it is a power law plus this kind of two bumps. And as we increase, so here the simulation has a, a ratio between the cyclotron frequency of the ions and Q, where Q is the rate at which we amplify the magnetic field. In this case, it's 1600. And if we go to larger values of the magnetizations, to 3200, we still see the non-thermal tail. And actually, we see it a little bit harder, which is the same behavior that we saw in the case of the simulations where we impose a cheering motion in the plasma. So this is, again, very good news because this ratio in reality, in a turbulence, should be very large. Okay? So this is a very good safety check. Uh, so in conclusions, we are showing that stochastic acceleration can happen due to pressure and isotropy-driven instabilities both in the case of the electrons and in the case of the ions. In both cases, we need initial values of beta of the order of 1. When we go to larger betas, the, the effect tends to disappear. In the case of the electrons, the spectral index that we are seeing is 3.7, which is pretty close to what people infer from radio observations of Sagittarius A star in its quiescent state. In the case of ions, we do see a power law with index 
plus these two bumps that we believe are related to the different wavelengths of the ion cyclotron modes that appear in our simulation. This is, by the way, some, uh, a work in progress. Everything that I said about ions is work in progress. In the case of electron, it's something that is already published. So, uh, but something that is the, the, the two cases, the electrons and the ions, have in common is that what is happening here is that these instabilities grow, getting their energy mainly from the, the Thelmar part of the spectrum, but then they pass part of that energy to a small population of particles that end up populating the non-thermal tails. So this is something that is common between electrons and ion acceleration. Um, so the open question that we are investigating right now is the dependence on plasma parameters, right? Because we, both for ions and for uh, electrons, we tested two specific cases, in, in particular two specific values for the temperature of the particles, but in an accretion disk, you expect this temperature to change significantly from one region to another. So we want to have very clear what is the dependence of the acceleration on the plasma parameters, both of the ions and of the electrons. This is one question that we are currently uh, investigating, and the other is the long-term evolution, because uh, as I said before, what we did in all this simulation was to amplify the magnetic field by a factor of three, right? But in an accretion disk, uh, you either expect the amplification factor of the magnetic field to be significantly larger than that, or you could also have the situation where the magnetic field grows sometimes, and then it decreases, and then it grows again, especially if you have some sort of turbulent state driven by the magnetorotational instability. So we want to know what happens with this process of acceleration if we keep going and we keep amplifying uh, or, or decreasing the magnetic field. So these are the two main questions, but at least we show in two particular cases that the pressure and isotropy driven instability can produce non-thermal tails in the, in the spectrum. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>